on this page. Um, there's some other things here, and like enable gradual where you. Okay, so on the print speed, I yeah, what I was talking about, uh, oops, 35, 30 to forty, thirty to forty five is generally pretty good. Uh, but if you're in a time crunch or something where you need to get it going faster, that's obviously an option. You can increase that, but that's what I like to keep it at. The rest of the stuff I don't mess with, but it's really just that top print speed right up there that I would change. This travel stuff, um, it depends on how you like stuff, but depending, if it's all like, like on this Benchy, since it's just one model, you don't need to mess with any of this stuff really. Um, but if you had a bunch of like smaller models all over the place, I would adjust this and especially the Z hop height. I would, hit, I would do at least one millimeter, but I like to do two millimeters on the Z hop height, which basically means when it's moving from, let's say we had a model over here to a model over here, it's going to hop over to that one and it won't to avoid the chance of knocking the other model over, which will definitely increase your percentage of um, successful prints in it, you're, you won't have failed prints nearly as often. Travel avoid distance isn't as necessary, but I increase it to one millimeter, and that seems to work. It seems to work perfectly. Sorry, it keeps like glitchy. Um, avoid supports and traveling. Um, not super necessary, I guess. Depends on, well, so they obviously don't have supports on, that doesn't matter. But basically, what that does is it means that when you travel between parts it will it won't hit the supports which i guess can be helpful but it's not super necessary um next we have the cooling i never i never mess with this because it's just not necessary i don't think but you can obviously look into it more but in my opinion the cooling the fan speed and all that is never necessary to change and then here you can change your support settings. So let's say if I turn supports on, I don't necessarily need them, but I can turn them on. And then it drops down with all these different things I can change. So support placement, I can do that. So it's just, so it can do supports all over the model that it's necessary or supports that are just like going to be touching the bed, the print, the print bed. Um, uh, so you can change that, but like, it's just up to you. Um, but basically, that would mean is, like, if I had it where it was on everywhere, then as you can see on this benchy here, if I zoom in a little bit, maybe there we go. Oops. Like on my benchy here, you can see this the roof here. It's just basically printing out of nowhere, which is a spot you might want support. I don't think it's necessary on this printy, but on a different print, you might want supports right there. And so you would have to change that to everywhere and not just touching build plate. Because those supports would not be touching the build plate. They would be touching the rest of the model. But that's basically what that does. Um, support pattern, always change this. Never do support pattern at triangles. Um, the reason for that is you won't be able to get the support off if it's fairly large support like a big overhang there's no way it, it won't come off so i always switch this to cross this you always want the support pattern to be cross because it gives it good support but it comes off super easily support density and all this other stuff you don't really need to mess with um but you can just kind of adjust it and it tells you what it is um but it's not the most it's not super necessary to adjust and the rest of the stuff is just however you want but the uh support angle i guess you can change i think the default is pretty good and so basically what that means is support over in 60 60 degrees means that anything over a 60 degree overhang is gonna it's gonna add supports to but anything that's not over 60 um it's just gonna let it be but you can address that so that like you can change 45 so anything at a 45 degree angle is going to have supports but it's not super necessary to adjust and then build plate adhesion there's a few different types of things you could do here uh i usually use a brim just 
because I'm most of my prints are a lot of pieces, and a brim helps because it holds the pieces down a little bit better. Um, basically, which means it's just this big like thing you peel off at the end, and I can show you what that is. But then there's a skirt, which is just basically a line that doesn't even touch your model. It just goes around the model to all that does is get the nozzle primed. Um, then there's the raft. Never, never choose none. Just saying, never choose, never choose none. But there's a raft, uh, which I've never really used, um, just because I don't think it's necessary and it takes a lot of filament and a lot of time. It's basically a brim that is like a couple layers tall and way bigger. So I wouldn't really ever. You never really need to use a raft, but you can you can mess with that and see, but that's you never really need to use that. Um, so nothing big on that. And then there's a few other things down here. I never messed with the special modes or the experimental. But then if you have a dual extruder printer, you can obviously change that. But I use the AnyCubic i3 Mega, as you can see up here, and that's not a dual extrusion printer, so that's not necessary. Uh, you can change your printer, so you can like add printer. And it gives you this whole list of printers. And then there's a custom, and there's other. And so it has just about every printer you could think of. And so you find your printer and put that in. So it gives you the correct uh, like size of the printer and certain settings for the printer, the specific printer you have, which is nice. Uh, I have the Unicubic i3 Mega. I also have the Ultramaker 2 Go on here. Um, that's a printer I used to use, but I don't use that anymore. But you can have a couple printers if you have a multiple, and then you can choose between it, choose between them. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And then when you have everything you how you like it, you just click prepare, and it'll slice down here. It says slicing, and then it loads it up. It takes a second, depending on the model and supports and how big it is and all that stuff. Uh, that'll take a different amount of time. But this bench would take a little over three and a half hours. Uh, so that's a good. That's good. And then you can once it's after it's sliced, you can switch up here where it says solid view. It's a little drop down, and you can click layer view, and then it loads up for a second. And then you can click. Oh, I had my supports on. Whoops. See, that's what the supports look like, and all that light blue stuff is the supports. But we don't need supports in this model. I've printed benches all the time. And I never use supports, and they all turn out perfect. So we'll take. So I turned supports off because I forgot I had them on, and now I'm reslicing, and so it shouldn't take. It shouldn't take three and a half hours. Okay, two and a half, a little over two and a half hours. That's a lot better. Um, okay, and then over here it says three twenty, and this has this little dot. You can scroll up and down to just scroll through all the layers, which is pretty cool. Um, which that's nice, and then you can see it has this color code system uh, to show what's what. And so, like, so here's a brim. This is what a brim would look like. Um, whoops. Uh, oh, I have to reslice it. Uh, but a brim. I'll show you in a second once it's done slicing, because I accidentally screwed it up, and then I had to undo it and reslice. But uh, there we go. So that is a brim. Maybe you can see it better under. But this light blue is a brim. So it basically just goes around the outside a few times. Um, uh, dang it. Okay, well, but it goes around the outside a few times to get it all ready to go. And it holds it down a little bit better so that you have a less chance of it popping off the build plate. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, now it's ready to print. So I click, I, well, you slice it. Mm -hmm. And then we, it'll say save to file. But what you want to do is you want to take an SD card and insert it into your computer. And then when it's inserted, it'll change. After a second, it'll say save to removable drive. And then you click on that and it'll say file saved. And you pull it out and you put it in your printer and it'll give it a name. As you can see down here, and then you print it, and that's basically it. This time thing is always really accurate, so that's really helpful. But uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.